any piece of creation has its own time and day and that will come either in my lifetime or you know after and what's the point in creating a heritage based startup or an experience which is impacting the humans in a negative way that we want to bring india on the world stage we all know about indian history everything about every temple a lot of sculptures hey after do you know what konark temple symbolizes yes well to know our indian history and indian values better let me introduce to ajit padmanam who is a founder of who we are showcasing indian history through virtual reality well you heard it right it's indian history with virtual reality now you can get access to all these monuments historical places visit them the creation of metaverse where indian culture can be learned and studied in a world that is rapidly changing preserving our indian history provides a sense of identity and continuity stick around and in enjoy the podcast so first of all welcome to the show ajit and uh, i would uh, love to understand your vision and first of all let's just talk about your journey from scratch you know how sure. how did you pan into leaving your corporate world and going for a music album and how it's uh, gone so far right wonderful um after thanks for those nice words uh, initially um so it's been a it's been a fantastic journey man if i look at it um i just wonder you know there is some other greater force that is planning this <laughs> it's uh, it's absolutely not uh, what i had uh, uh what i had planned for at least um you know so i joined the corporate world right after my engineering and um, while in engineering and while in the corporate i was always with music we were you know forming bands and performing live and stuff like that um and the music that we used to play was classic rock heavy metal that kind of stuff right and a little bit of fusion here and there whenever we got the right people um so my corporate life was uh, uh, you know uh, multi dimensional fascinating i mean i was with the same company for 18 years um mm. something that's, yeah that's not okay. kind of uh, traditionally uh, advised even today <laughs> so <laughs> i i was um, um quite happy with the the kind of work that we were doing there and uh, you know international uh, travels and stuff like that so it was good good exposure and that led me to the middle management layer and stuff like that but i always had this within me to become a musician full time right so uh, when i joined infi when i was around 21 i told myself that okay let me give till 40 and then quit and then move into music full time that was the target okay. so it was always uh, you know it, it's it's like a whimsical kid telling himself that you know you've got 19 years you do what you want right um so when i turned 40 i thought i will quit and uh, get into music full time i have launched two albums i go by the moniker of uh, world void web um you know void or akasha the fifth element the first element uh, so to speak the subtlest element of panchabhuta is something that's fascinated me for a long long time right so my idea was okay let me you know do this after 40 but you know life had other plans like john lynn famously said right and uh, i had this heritage bug out of nowhere um i wanted to create music concerts for my album against heritage sites as backdrops uh, something that yanni had done around 20 25 years back as a as a musician right um but when i reached out to the event management teams in mumbai and various other cities they said this is way too ambitious um uh you know you may want to kind of scale down your uh, dream in the beginning so i am somebody who doesn't scale down he, you know i just know one way up and uh i was digging into virtual reality and augmented reality back then while in the corporate world working with the technology um uh, stuff so there was a there was a fleeting moment where i thought that okay how about doing concerts in virtual reality so there's no need to travel and you can gather the entire world uh, for your stage right so right that's how this idea was seeded 
and uh, when i met up with the extended team of mine in so far as the music is concerned certain uh, uh, people who have been listening to my music for years and certain uh, uh, i mean my sound engineer himself who's part of the team now at who we are um you know we all met up and we discussed this and i told them look this is what i want to be doing what do you think and they all uh, uh, lapped up the idea pretty much like how you spoke about initially right you are doing something of value you're leaving the right. industry behind like that kind of a um, thought process yes. and in one of those discussions i was telling them you know how do we tell people about our history and our legacy when we don't know who we are right so that statement uh, got us the title of the company itself who we are right wow so the journey which started with corporate planned into music kind of resulted in virtual reality and and a startup that i'm running now it's it's about 2 years old and we are completely focused on heritage arts and culture we want to bring india on the world stage we want to get the latest and the greatest of technologies in india for our people uh to consume their own history and uh, to let them realize what their ancestors have left behind and where we are in terms of us living that's that's beautiful and i feel uh the moment uh, the name who we are like you know the curiousness or understanding ourselves i feel there is so much that we don't uh, look in ourselves or your inner consciousness and we are always seeking things outside so who we are the name itself is i mean it was a brilliant uh, mind at Probably. work you know i mean Probably. even the name itself yeah it it makes you curious you know right. it makes you curious and that's what you want to do you know how can you get people on who are curious to see what happened in the past how was it back then while there is so much drama around played in a lot of uh, movies or uh, a lot of uh, web series or something like that but to be to be actual be there and uh, feel it must be like amazing okay Absolutely. coming back to the part of uh, we'll come back to who we are first right. when your first album released mm-hmm. i mean you waited for a long time okay i have a lot of friends musicians and i am also part of groove nft where we trying to educate musicians so that they can launch their nft as a music album or as a music song they don't have to wait for long because it's so commercial uh, out there in bollywood or all any any place you know or any film industry so to have to leverage this technology and monetize it or to have it on the blockchain is something we want and uh, you know to have a making a an album like i have different experience of different people so when your album launched or when you had that thing and to get it with that cultural heritage along with it and everything how was the feeling oh man what do i say so this was uh, 2016 when uh, i released my debut album it's called uh, think void and as i said all my album titles are with void you know it's a play of the word void while it means wide you know think wide you know but i put in the void element there so see when i set out to do music uh, early on in my life it was just a, a matter of passion it was just a matter of uh, you know um doing better than what i was doing yesterday right um playing the guitar better than what i was playing yesterday that's that's how it started right i'm a i'm a guitarist i'm a lead guitarist and um the composer bug bit me way back in 1998 uh when i would just joined engineering and i had just started playing the guitar right so i believe it's something to do with my you know past life or some kind of a some kind of a redundant memory that uh you know got me into music because i have not learned music i am a self taught musician and uh being a self taught musician and improvising over certain uh, theories and structures in the western music i think you know that 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 should be a, a a past life memory kind of a thing right um so i used to write a lot of songs when in college so you know i would bunk classes uh, either for performing live or 
to you know write some songs because the moment you get the inspiration you need to you need, you want to kind yeah. of capture it right you want to note it down you know yes. because there is a saying you know uh, i am your idea use me or lose me right yeah definitely you know, that, that says it so powerfully that you know when when an idea comes to me i wholeheartedly respect it i don't let go of it and most of my tunes songs they've just come as a as a as a fleeting moment and i just pick up the guitar and you know record it so coming back to your question when i launched my music album uh and i put it up on all these distribution channels online 2016 this was way before the nfts etc were there i mean they were there but not you know kind of spoken about so yeah, was- i was only on the digital distribution so all itunes and spotify and stuff so the day it was launched it was like a uh, a very very fulfilling moment for me where a lot of my friends family you know with relatives um fans new new you know strangers as they seemed back then they kind of connected with the music they related to what i was doing it was a very very fulfilling moment yes. and um, of course in in one corner of my heart it was a very very overwhelming moment i still don't know why it 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 was a very very overwhelmingly sentimental moment for me to get the album out in the world right um and i believe that i have always been doing music uh with a purpose it's not to sell it's just to make music you know it's to kind of challenge myself creatively you know how can i break that barrier can i do something uh greater or farther right so i never was behind the numbers or the sales or anything like that so 2016 the album launched 2017 i had a chance meeting with some people at sony dadc which is the packaging and the distribution wing of sony music okay like they package cds and stuff like that so back then cds were still you know they were kind of fading off from the technology world but uh, mm-hmm. they said you know we could create some um cds for you and we could uh, you know distribute it all over india so i was like okay let me try this out also and uh, one thing led to the other the album was released in december 2017 with the sony dadc label and uh, that did quite well you know all over india uh, when i say quite well i've heard a lot about the music from people who still connect with me today right it may not be commercially great because i mean you wouldn't have heard of me before this discussion <laughs> so yeah but know, uh, yeah 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 I, you you right but i am very clear i'm not trying to fake that you know this is some amazing music that's come out and you know people should buy it or you know when when its time will come it will live its own life you know that's the philosophy that i believe in any piece of creation has its own time and day and that will come either in my lifetime or you know after it so once that happened that's when i had this live concert uh, imagination right you know how should i go live right and uh, yeah after that the movie our thing started so i launched the second album uh, earlier this year in january um and we had a live concert before the uh, album itself which became a part of the album also so there are the latest album is called wider perspectives uh it's got a lot of world history minced in the instrumental music so i speak about the indus valley civilization sindhu saraswati wow. civilization so you know there is a historian featured on the song who i met up in chennai and he is able to speak the language of the sindhu saraswati civilization right all those tablets or grooves that we would have seen in our history books he can kind of voice it right so i got him to voice it and it's part of the song there right the other song is about orion constellation and its significance across ancient civilizations including the indian civilization right how we uh, look at orion as uh, you know nataraja is a manifestation of orion right so all of those things i try to bring them in so that this has its own life and wherever these uh, these knowledge nuggets become relevant maybe this music will uh take a leap right uh Definitely. in the um, i also featured a, a whistle blowing ancient whistle blowing community in spain 
Okay, this oh, is this okay. there's an island called Canary Islands where there is a ancient whistling language where they communicate through whistles because wow. there is a lot of mountains and you know one one whistling person here can communicate with the other corner other you know other person right in the corner of the mountain. Fantastic ancient language. Wow, oh, that's beautiful. Uh, in fact, even in India, Meghalaya has this. But when I reached out to the tourism department of Meghalaya, I didn't see any response, so I couldn't do anything there. But I could get these guys from Spain to do it for me. Um, you know, they were kind enough to release videos and stuff like that. But fantastic! I mean, such ancient knowledge that we have, in so far as music is concerned. I think I took it upon myself as a duty to bring this forth. And um, I'm glad to. have this experience because of so many layers to it first of all when you talked about i think there is bigger uh, things up at play when you are talking about music also it's more to you know make people understand about the history or you know about indian value or indian history which lived but still uh, now nowadays if you a lot of youth don't believe to go and dig the history you know there are lesser people who would want to do that but when it comes to technology when it comes to something te- technical at play they want to dive in they want to un- understand what's what's and how so just by creating this beautiful immersive experience we can retain or we can let people live with indian values i mean indian That's cultural true. heritage which Absolutely. is just uh, not talked about i mean Absolutely. people are only talk about talking about commercial stuff here but when uh, you talk about indian culture like you you're mentioning so many things even i i don't know about uh, the orient thing and you, what you mentioning but when i see that uh, the metaphysical value or astronomical value to our history you know some way it makes us understand that there's so much there in our vedas or anything to have it immersively in you know company like who we are i mean that's to me is something beautiful in the sense that you are also uh, leveraging the education their history through technology Absolutely. and uh, it's it's uh, really important i when i say important it is not about the numbers or anything i feel it's important for us to get the get a future generations knowledgeable about our culture i think it's very important because as we see the west influencing the east but now even the west they are all influenced by indian culture but people in india commercially they are not you know so That's this right. experience can just change the whole game whole dynamics of how people think of uh, indian history or the metaphysical value to it the astronomical things or what you know you can bring to the table so i feel I, when i uh, you know uh, got to know about this when i researched and also i i felt this is something beautiful at play and uh, i think uh, it's going to be something very big you know people are not heard of it but it's going to be very big that's that's i can say if you know you were taking a good uh, partnerships forward you have a great road map and you keep on building things i mean it's going to be beautiful wonderful man thank you so much for that thank you but yeah i agree with you um you know um i was uh, reading a book um yesterday where it talks about um the psyche of indians where you know we are bitten by this thing called stockholm syndrome i'm sure you would have heard of stockholm yes, syndrome yeah, you know yeah. um you seem to because you're so long in um, in slavery or in kind of um you know a mindset of being governed by some right. one else some entity yeah yeah so you tend to believe that they are the greatest that's stockholm syndrome right uh, typically it happens both with uh, hostages and stuff like that over a period of time the hostages will develop love for the for the guys who have got them hostage right so i think we are kind of suffering that as a as right. a civilization right. thousand years of whatever has happened to us is not easy to go away in one generation it is not 
I mean, we got to be realistic. The fact that within 70 years or 75 years of independence, we are here talking about our civilization and retaining our native names, yeah. you know, it says a lot. Uh, you it know, yesterday the Pope had traveled to Canada to apologize for the, uh, you know, the 4,000 uh, student bodies that were found in a residential school, right? That whole, uh, the Native American uh, issue that had cropped up. So he went there to apologize, so, you know, for the atrocities committed, right? And worldwide, he goes around apologizing, which is a very nice thing to do, right? Um, but just imagine if India was at that stage where we wouldn't even have been able to retain our culture, heritage, and all our names would have been anglicized by now. What's happened in Australia, what's happened in Canada, or even US, right? Right. So the fact that we've lived through all of that, it means that we are designed to overcome all of it too. But it will take time. But yeah, I mean, who we are, uh, like you said, it's got a huge ambition to bring this about. Because in every generation, if you see that, you know, when we were kids or our, uh, I mean, when we were kids, I'm I'm 40 now, as you can make out from my 40 year uh, planning, right? Right. Yeah. So I, as a kid, was exposed to Amar Chitakara comics. That was our glimpse into history, right? Then the TV serial of Mahabharat came. That was another glimpse into history. So I think yes. as the media progresses, we need to bring in history into that media. And that's what who we are. Again and again. Bilkul. Again and again, we have to reiterate. We have to give it a newness. We have to give it. We have to partake in it wholly and from within the soul. Right. So I think that's what we have set out to do with who we are where the team is so multi-dimensional. We've got filmmakers, we've got Vedic chant uh, healers, um, we've got sound engineers, right? And at the same time, we've got historian partners like Bharat Gyan, um, DK Hari and DK Hemahari, illustrious uh, couple. Oh, nice. they've, they've been with history like for 30, 35 years, which is like, you know, a gold mine of the entire itself. So they were so kind enough to partner with us at who we are, right? Recently, we partnered with, uh, I mean, Bharatiya Vidya Bhavan reached out to us to work on virtual reality and heritage uh, for their projects. So we became partners. So imagine that kind of a knowledge base now where wow. we could bring out all those nuggets of their books, their uh, write-ups into a visually immersive experience, a series of experiences. So you that's the right arms and ammunition at play right arms and ammunition and it's a huge huge ambition i am looking at a, a roadmap of at least 10 to 20 years you know and move along with the technology i don't want to be stuck in vr ar or anything like that you know it's an ever evolving on. place to be in yeah, because right now metaverse is so so nascent that we want to create the first indic metaverse you know a metaverse where you will be focusing only on indic stuff it could be handicrafts right it could be the artisan community selling handicrafts, I meant, in the metaverse. Yeah. It could be temples and monuments as a tool visit, as a tourism discovery. It could be music concerts against those temple sites, which was my dream back in 2017 after my first album. Or it could be, um, um, you know, games around Indic heritage, mm. right? It could be PC console games, VR games, you know, anything like that. So, of course, you know, this requires a huge amount of funding and, you know, the commercial uh, powerhouse has to be there, which we are still searching for. So we are looking at projects where we could build some content first up and then um, uh, look at further funding rounds. Uh, mentioning about your team, your partnerships and all, I feel when you say 10, 12 years, I feel that's that is like the most important thing. Because when I talk to a lot of people from Metaverse or NFT projects, I mean, right now there are so many things at play that uh, even interoperability is some of the things which needs to be solved to have uh, Metaverse spoken like social media. You know, that everybody's talking about it. That in your Metaverse, they buy a garland from a temple, but they can go in another Metaverse and having the same garland which they bought on in your metaverse they're right. accessing it and talking to their friends yeah i bought this garland from this metaverse they're talking right. about it 
so if right. they that kind of problem needs to be solved which is happening plus when you say 10 12 years i feel it is uh, very important that at stages when uh, web3 or crypto or any market goes down up and up down you are still playing with the community actually i think community is web3 is driven by community right so when i formed groove nft i can give you my experience that i didn't do any cash burn you know i didn't build tech because tech um, uh, amounts to a lot of value you know oh. first you build tech and then you go to investors and have that but i thought of in a different way i thought let's educate people let's bring people together let's just talk like this i'm talking to you right yes i'll not be able to burn my you know burn cash to make tech but let's leverage these people and then give give them something to play you know make some of the other uh, prototype and give them this is what and you know started to leverage like that because education of the masses is very important you are saying 10 12 years it can be 6 years if they educate themselves you know Got become it. as a community as a whole Got so it. so i feel that's very important which i feel you should think about it like we are talking right now here i feel there should be more people talking about it normally and it should be commercialized not in a way to sell commercialized in a way that you are obviously giving value exactly a lot of people in india thinking like you but they don't have a medium i mean they don't they are not tech based but they have mm. a lot of history knowledge i mean i have seen a lot of people when i start talking about history and i see these uh, uh, elder people they talk so beautifully how everything is created how it was but they don't know about tech so i think getting a lot of people on board and talking about things is something which i mean it'll be great if you can think on on those levels absolutely man absolutely and you know um there's always a breakthrough moment in any technology right and uh, we are still kind of waiting for that breakthrough moment in so far as uh, you know metaverse is concerned right um no amount of uh, i mean i understand the the monkeys and the you know the kind of nfts that we have today they 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 are pretty much playing out like how internet played out initially yes definitely right? you need to attract an audience with whatever banal stuff we can right so i um you know i would love to be a part of the breakthrough moment i am i am hoping that we are blessed to become a part of that breakthrough moment for metaverse at least i mean definitely I, i like you are doing something of value they are not even doing something it's basically hyped up projects hyped up. so and uh, you know pulling that rug kind of a thing a lot of projects we see in nft cool. i feel they are hyped up just because you know when you see a uh, mercedes or some big luxury car that's hyped you know but when you see something which is of massive value you know and then people drive like let's say you do something like there checkpoints or road maps in your metaverse or something where indian history uh, i mean there are quizzes or something where you get some something you know you can do uh, like the people are doing play to earn games you know p2e just because people to make to make a community mm. we'll have to drag this commercial audience out into the history yeah. we can only do that by converting by you know converting their hyped up things into the knowledge yeah. i mean that's the most uh, amazing part that they get some reward they get something but they also get knowledge Correct. after some time they will not be there for the rewards they'll be there for the knowledge we we'll have to Correct. change you know the yeah. whole scenario and i'm i'm sure um, you know with with each of your thought process that you are putting in in this conversation um it's a matter of time before that it, it reaches the universe and it's kind of manifested yeah definitely you know definitely um, the, the other thing that i was looking at in terms of uh, metaverse see, the reason we got into metaverse is i was reading about metaverse since 2015 2016 you know and uh, there's this uh, great book called uh, the spatial web by okay. uh, gabriel uh, rene right so he had uh, 
before he launched the book he wanted some reviews and stuff so i was part of that group that kind of reviewed the book and we got those early copies right uh, fascinating stuff he touched upon uh, blockchain nfts all of it in that spatial web back in 2015 and um, i got hooked into that whole technology play right and two three years later when movia was created um, i realized that yes we could you know merge both of these and we could be relevant um, in terms of technology also for as long as we want to right for me the 20 year roadmap is not only on the technology side but also on the content building side right this is very important yeah there are there are huge number of structures in the northeast that we don't even know of right yeah right uh, i don't know if you've heard of this place called unakoti u n a k o t i your audience could look it up on google unakoti is uh, 1 crore minus 1 okay Why and it's say in, that? and it's a series of mountains or hills that have carved deities that have okay. oh okay carved deities it's got ganesha it's got right, Shiva, right, right. all of those parvati all of that but it's it's a mountain it's a hill range so you got to walk oh, through the hill range to see all of them of course they are not 1 crore minus 1 that's an exaggerated number but just look at the fascination and the passion of our ancestors wow any stone they saw they would chisel it out right so it's this kind of content that would take time to in, yeah it it would take time in creating we have to do justice to it. It's like filmmaking, right? A, a film script is ready in maybe three, four months. The film takes around three, four years to make, right? So the 20 years timeline that I have is in terms of consuming all of the Indian content that is there and bring it to the uh, fore, you know? Not only limited to temples and monuments, but also, you know, with handicrafts, right? Uh, a lot of dying handicrafts right now, you know, uh, the next generation has ceased to continue with it. So we we have this whole purpose associated with why we are doing who we are. And we need to make these things uh, happen. Uh, that's the reason it will take time, you know. And uh, well, like this thing uh, you mentioned, uh, I feel uh, also uh, there are a lot of things, uh, I mean, yeah, there are so many things which uh, you can do. Like, I mean, uh, like having adding a digital value to it, just having a travel brand, travel executive brand who is around their temple. And, you know, you can, people in India can travel, but people from the West, they cannot. So for them, it's on VR. And for people who are in India, they can leverage that experience through buying your NFTs or doing something of, of that sort. So Absolutely. that they go and see themselves immerse in that environment and they get knowledge so there are a lot of uh, these uh, historical groups where uh, they can buy your nft for a certain amount and there is a travel group who's sponsoring you just because they're they're you know making money on a lot of different revenue structures they have so having a digital value towards it it was people nowadays i mean it's more about for uh, even youth to think about things, it's more about experience. Right. I mean, if Absolutely. you create an experience, like even we go for a movie or anything, we have that experience we come out with. And we think about that experience, what we felt in that moment. You know, so that immersive experience with who we are and a digital product, Absolutely. where what we will do, people will start making videos about that content showcasing especially you know they can tag you along and a lot of things Absolutely. and then you can bring out a product that people who cannot reach here this is who we are and we are also you know you can just wear your vr and you can do yoga there and you do prana prana i'm just sitting out there we have exercising going on pranam and you know alum vilum just in front of that moment so i mean I'm so flooded with ideas. I'm so sorry. No, absolutely. No, I, I, actually, no. see, when we got in who we are, I, I was very clear that we are going to be a part of experience economy. You know, this is not a service economy. Um, even when we speak with our uh, clients or even with the government agencies, we make it clear that we are not part of the service economy. This is not a service that we are giving. 
this is an experience yes that we're giving right so that uh, is at the cornerstone of whatever we are doing right and each of these experiences need to be very very elevatory and uh, you know very very exhilarating for the consumers whoever they are right um and you know part of our ecosystem or part of our whole development um, cycle is to create um the theory printed models of these scanned areas right which becomes the physical artifact for you to take back as a souvenir or buy online right so that kind of circles out the entire experience economy you know in the west if if you travel to any museum or any site in the west right it could be us uk australia anywhere right they have a very systematic way of going through a museum right and the final exit will have what they call as a souvenir shop so that you can pick up some memorabilia from there yes souvenirs yeah and dear ones right it's the same model that we want to bring in at ovia right right so where we will set up experience centers at these various sites it will have a souvenir shop because we have the 3d printed models of such collectibles uh, which are absolutely purchasable so your point about um you know physical and digital absolutely the way to go because unless you touch and feel your history you will not identify with it especially for the indians absolutely i mean okay, more of westerners so... as well because you know they 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 love to have something exotic yeah and they yeah. <laughs> yeah. anything indic is exotic you know so why why is indians because we are more into getting our family you know having everything for our families we if you talk about a normal indian now they would be thinking of all the time making money or you know having financial independence if you talk to history about them 80% of people would be thinking okay we will do this but this is what we need to do you know uh, so that's why i said indians because the west people they love experiencing things they right. know they are living for the vision you know they they are having i mean uh, i met a friend of, who lives in uh, netherlands his ceo of a company he drives a bus on on his weekends you know oh. and like why he drives like for him it's an experience yes, like in uh, back in india if your boss is driving a bus <laughs> while he is a you know owner know. of a, such a big company you would laugh on him but he is driving yeah. for the experience but indians won't do yeah. such a thing you know so and for them why, why i say indians to educate more because west will come along the way i know these they will come but when indians start to talk about this it will be flooded with a lot of like i think the rate would be we are like 1.4 billion you know i mean that's amazing almost so yeah. I mean uh, that can be huge. Absolutely, absolutely, man. I okay, agree. so w- w- why do you think that uh, you mentioned in your uh, TEDx uh, that uh, while technology is always a problem uh, solution, humans are the problem and technology is the solution. You said that humans should be the solution. Just give me a little some thought on that. so um see this comes from uh, a person uh, by the name of uh, douglas rushkoff okay okay douglas rushkoff is is an author and he runs this team team human experience the right? team human so he is a fascinating guy you know with some lot of good thoughts i mean he's a best selling author you know is at that level Okay. So he said in one of the conversations or in one of the articles that uh, you know it's always traditionally said that you know technology provides a solution to your problems. Right? Uh and that has led to whatever technologies we've created thus far which has led to more problems. I mean, you know, just holistically looking at it, right? Right. Yeah. So he says that let me flip it across and uh, let's make the technology as the problem and human is the solution in the sense that 
your human body is the is the greatest possible mechanistic system that is available today um its integration is unsurpassed its way of working even today is under research right brain today largely is unknown you know how it operates we have segmented them into regions in the brain to make it yes. convenient for us to deduce you know this may be going on this may be going on you yes. know some hormonal triggers here and there you know oxytocin and dopamine and all that kind of stuff but we have not cracked it so in a sense uh, while we are looking at inventing things outside of us we have not realized the inside of us itself yes. right again it comes to that philosophy to that whole thing so my thing with technology is it's it's a fantastic tool i mean the, if i look at history the ancient temples that we su- see today is a testament of the advanced technology of our ancestors so technology is not bad right because technology was there we are able to witness certain histories that other civilizations have not been able to in yes. in the terms of temples and the architecture and the science behind each of these right so technology is great right and if you agree that technology is great and you flip it to the factor that you know there are some limitations with technology as there are limitations with anything that is human created right because it's not perfect it's never going to be perfect that is when i i thought that yeah this makes a lot of sense personally to me that you know human the the solution has to be the person a humanity as a solution right and technology the problems associated with technology can always be fixed so that's what i meant that you know technology is a problem and human is the solution because yeah. whatever we create at who we are it has to be consumable by human to such an extent that we do not induce any addiction or any malefied uh, effects into a human who is consuming it because that goes against the very ethos that our ancestors stood for i mean what's the point in creating a heritage based startup or an experience which is impacting the humans in a negative way it's it's most against our ethos and our technology right so that's where that whole thing came about um no uh... you know like i'm like, also a co-founder of innovative india you can see a lot of youtube videos there so we made a youtube video the best technology ever you will find the best and the most upgraded technology is mm. our inner consciousness so we made a yeah. video on that so i was just going in back in days while you were uh, making content about it that how we are triggering because our inner consciousness is something amazing you know so yeah, and we don't know what it is right and we don't know still we are figuring out we've yeah. done all the research all the patterns and there are yeah. different patterns with different human beings different dnas there's so many things at play but we're still curious about and that gets back me to who we are i mean it's yeah. so curious to so, find our inner so, consciousness exactly you know and to find who we are right so yeah that so that's beautiful that's, yeah. yeah so you know uh, at who we are in the days ahead we want to create certain uh, r&d programs also where we get deep into these kind of researches right see i believe that a lot of our scriptures have all the technologies and all the sciences there for us right we need to tap into them we need to understand their perspective and understand where they are coming from to solve the current problems of technology right Uh, for example you know um our uh, vedic chant healer in the team aditya rangan he is a he is a he is a chant was digging into puranas and see what our boundaries should be right for who we are as a company what of technology should we not get into right so he did that over a period of three or four weeks time he is still continuing uh, you know we dig in more and more but it 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 brings out such a beautiful nugget of knowledge that is completely untapped it is so untapped that uh, you know it it baffles you right i mean it's like you know things are in front of you but you're unable to see because your eyes are not equipped to see that you know it's like a it's 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 like a metaphysical thing right so something like inner consciousness is you 
you know it is there you experience it every time but you cannot define it you yes. cannot dissect it you cannot figure out you know how or what it is the same thing so we are fascinated by the ancient technology as a team and we strongly believe that all the solutions to the problems that are there today has been documented and is very much there we just need to dig in we need to have the right lenses to see them and to learn from them humbly completely out of humility right so this booklet that we created that aditya rangan created um you know we uh, intend to give it to every employee who joins who we are it becomes a starting point for him or her you know to look at this as a scope as a wider perspective of what is possible uh, with our history and with our uh, scriptures so i just wanted to bring that out because you asked that problem and solution wala thing i believe that this body is perfect but whatever this body creates is imperfect and therefore we need to plug that imperfection with a perfection in so far as uh, the impact on humanity is concerned right. nothing else you know i mean uh, th- that's beautifully put yeah, you know, i mean if i how... share one of my dreams i'm sorry if i can share one of my dreams yeah, yeah, I, ahead, yeah. dreams and i note them down in a journal and stuff like that so one of the dreams i you know i was kind of tinkering with some equipment and uh, there is this spirit that comes in front and he says uh, you know i am looking at you and enjoying what i created right you look at what you are tinkering with and enjoy what you create and that kind of blew me apart i mean oh, i just I woke up that's deep and, and man this is this is crazy deep right so a lot of these things happen to me as an individual experience and i believe that uh, if i can become the vehicle to make the entire humanity realize who we are i think that's more than a legacy that i can bargain for yes definitely and uh, that's why i i'm glad that you're talking about your experience because at deep talk with aftrit i try so that people get that gold inside them you know cross by not thinking about anything because we are so limited we are like tiny piece in the whole universe and we think too much you know just bring out light to that just share probably if even 10 people from your words can do the same thing to restore our culture heritage heritage i mean you are successful absolutely you know if absolutely. 10 people form you know that this is a job at hand that we need to do this just by your your words i mean absolutely. the job is done absolutely see i'll tell you i some you know i was talking to somebody yesterday and he asked me how did i meet up this person and you know in the company and stuff like that so i told him that i was with uh, this corporate for 18 years right i mean i was with infosys for 18 years and the team that is there in who we are there is no shadow from infosys there all the people that i've met are after the idea that got seeded as who we are and that tells me that the entire universe is at play here aligning right? towards aligning towards it and i am pretty much confident that as as far as i am focused and as i keep moving and as the team learns and they focus and they help me focus right i mean it's not like a hierarchical team here okay the team is absolutely more knowledgeable than an outsider like me they have spent their life in history and heritage and culture and arts in various streams i am an outsider over here so i am you know i usually tend to be uh, humble and learn from them but at the same time we need to move in as a team and you know bring this unleash this whole thing of uh retelling history re looking at history and bring in a sense of pride and a sense of self worth uh i mean especially when you're talking about 75 years of independence uh, you know we need to figure out another alternate word for independence because it's really not independence it's it's kind of uh, a break away from the earth file tyranny violence and the torture we had first <laughs> while tyranny you know and we need to especially for in our in our in our heads like in you mentioned heads. yeah that uh, we mean, are always thinking of something superior than us because we've been taught or groomed through that you know to go away from that stages 
you know the indian heritage will take you so in a very different zone that you think highly of yourself as an indian i mean not so thinking about any other entity or any other country absolutely breaking barriers just because something is more superior than us humans and that's important so that's that's where we are that you know the team is so much into it i am an outsider and i keep grounded i keep telling myself you know don't don't jump beyond the gun and i think as a leader you need to be humble you need to be modest yes, yes you know yes. especially when you are doing something for a greater um, uh, cause mm-hmm. uh, you know I, i mean you are a vehicle you are a medium you are a channel whatever you want to be called so just stay that way and stop controlling things around you because a lot of people can would want to do this but someone desires it to do it and someone is making sure to bring out this you know because people have knowledge people have information what they do with it it depends upon a person who comes with the desire to let people know so there is always a medium towards it Absolutely. you know there people can be amazing beautiful legendary people not known to us just Maybe. because they didn't come out or just right. because you know they were not different mechanisms you know but uh, you are just making sure that the vision you had people align the vision Absolutely. for them aligning with more knowledge is great but yeah. to align themselves in is amazing it's a, it's a blessing rq acoustics okay mm. what is rq acoustic for the people to know i mean very important because most of them have no idea so very simply how can you put that across to people who want to understand it wonderful question man thank you for going so deep huh? it's it's fantastic so archaeoacoustics is a field in archaeology that deals with the sound of the monuments right uh, it is basically like this when you go into a cave or when you go into a temple today they you know the the pillars and the monument they will reflect sound right and the way they reflect sound is apparently a science of study okay. it's called archaeoacoustics uh you know one of the trivia that i uh, learned from a french archaeologist who i am um, an acquaintance with um she would go into these caves in france and she would uh, record the sound of the caves right now certain caves had great sound and certain caves were dead in terms of sound and coincidentally the caves with dead sounds didn't have any cave art okay okay but the caves with the archaeoacoustics had the cave art now is that something the ancients knew already that we are trying to figure out right now with a new field in archaeology called archaeoacoustics you know it's wow. baffling let me know and uh, it was beautiful to have you on show perfect thank you so much it was my honor and it's wonderful that we got connected uh, again by the design of the universe and that yes, i was able yes, to share my yes. uh, views with your audience um, you know as you said hopefully some of them turn out to be uh, yes, the legacy that's the goal you know yeah if you enjoyed the podcast keep learning keep growing have that self belief strong and keep listening to deep talk with after do like subscribe and shares as i bring you a lot of people from different kind of fields to talk unfiltered on my show deep talk with aptra